What's up, Outsiders? I am super excited today. I am here in the Adirondack Park. We are at the Adirondack Mountain Reserve parking lot by the Ausable Club. We are getting ready for a jam-packed itinerary, but what I'm most excited about is the second day. If all goes well, I'm gonna summit my 46th high peak and become a 46er. Day one, we are going to hike to the base of Armstrong. So we have to go through the Osable Club, which is a road, and then we hit the Adirondack Mountain Reserve, which is a dirt road. It has that really nice gate. And then work our way down the trail, go up to Lower Wolf Jaw, Upper Wolf Jaw, and Armstrong. Come down Armstrong, grab our packs, and then we're gonna go hike up the switchbacks to Indian Head. Check that out. And that's where we're gonna hike. We're gonna hike at the, the southernmost camp at Indian Head. So day two, we're going to go to Blake and Colvin, and then we're gonna come back and hit Dial and Nipple Top, and those four should give me my 46. I'm hoping to finish on Nipple Top. It's a super cold morning. Uh, minus 15 today, but it's supposed to warm up and actually be really, really great uh, temperatures and hopefully some good clear skies. So we're going to grab our super heavy packs for the winter and head off the trail. We have walked through the Osable Club past the golf course and we just registered. We're at the gate right now for the Adirondack Mountain Reserve, still private land, but it's a pretty smooth road, a little bit uphill. Should make good time to the base of Armstrong. So we've come off the AMR road to the trail going up to Gothics and Armstrong. We're dropping our big packs and our sled. Gonna go with our smaller summit packs and hopefully move a lot quicker. Strap on some snowshoes. We just crossed Beaver Meadow Falls, heading towards the base of Lower Wolf Jaw. The trail is not quite as good. We're breaking it a little bit. There was at least one person before us. But uh, in order to do the loop that we want to do, we got to break trail here and we'll probably be breaking it all the way up lower wolf jaw too. Part of the adventure, as Tom says. To the base of the wolf jaws. And uh, looks like the trail has been broken a little bit. And uh, we're gonna get a little bite to eat and head on up to Lower Wolf Jaw. All right, Tom, you lead the way. Next stop, 4,000 feet. We are at the Wolf Jaws Notch. Upper Wolf Jaws up that way. Lower Wolf Jaws behind me. This is that little dog leg to get to Lower Wolf Jaw. We're looking forward to the descent of Lower Wolf Jaw. You can see it's almost like a toboggan run coming down here. So we're gonna be glissading most of the way down. Should be pretty cool. Summit of the day. Yep. Marcy in the background. All the way down is Algonquin and right. And we got white face over here. Beautiful day. Two more summits to go. Going over to Upper Wolf Jaw and then Armstrong and then heading back to our packs. Next up, Upper Wolf Jaw. I think we've hit some of the glissading spots. Ouch. 
And just like that, we're at the trailhead. Boom. <laughs> That was a fun ride down. We're back at our packs now. Upper Wolf Jaw. Distances always amaze me in the Adirondacks. We were just there, that's lower wolf jaw behind me, just minutes ago. And we've already come down the valley and halfway up upper wolf jaw. Just a perfect day. One thing about mountain climbing is false summits. They're kind of demoralizing. We just came off of one. There was a big boulder at the top and only to find out that that's actually upper wolf jaw. So we got to go down this call a little bit and back up. Getting there. sucks when you work to gain some elevation only to have to lose it. That's the false summit over there. Looks so close, but upper wolf jaw summit, 20 yards. Usually you don't get distances like that. Let's do it. Ready? Hey, how's it going? Good. Go ahead. Where are you guys going to now? Armstrong. Armstrong? All right. We're hot on your tail. Right. Okay, we are on the summit of Upper Wolf Jaw. Still a gorgeous day. Almost no wind up here, which is amazing. That's where we came from, that's Lower Wolf Jaw, that false summit. The snow covered one in the background is giant. The big one in the background is Dix. And right there is Nipple Top. So that should be our final summit of tomorrow and hopefully my 46er. And we are heading over to that mountain, Armstrong, before we go down to camp at Indian Head. So Tom, what, what number uh, winter 46 is this? This is uh, number 34 for winter 46. All right. Getting close. Probably doesn't look like much on the camera, but that was a pretty steep little section with fresh snow, not much purchase. That was fun. Summit of Armstrong, another winter 46er for me, number 35 for Tom. Still beautiful skies, a little more wind up here, but just crystal clear day. We really lucked out. But that is just an awesome view of Gothics behind me. Incredible. I love it out here. Wish we could get a uh, clear view of Giant there. Some beautiful colors with the sunset. Turn in a rose color. Very beautiful. So we're back at our packs. Took us a little longer for the full day than anticipated. As you can see, it's dark. 
So I'm not gonna get a great view of Indian Head today. So we've kind of changed our plans a little bit for tomorrow. We're gonna get a nice early start for our four summits. And then we're gonna hope to be back in time to hit a sunset at Indian Head, which would be really, really nice. So right now we're gonna just pack up our heavy packs and uh, head to Indian Head and then set up camp. Okay, it's 10 to eight. We have our packs off. We're at camp. And uh, we're gonna do a Mexican hat dance to eat, cut this out and we're gonna put our tent right there and make some grub. Several minutes later, our tent is set up. Tom's doing a little bit more Mexican dance around it to mat it down. Now we're gonna secure the corners using uh, plastic bags buried in the snow. Home sweet home for a while. Tom's got uh, some sort of fancy meal. I've got my normal mountain house chicken fajita bowl. We're melting snow for the first day. We don't know where the creek is exactly and it's dark and we kind of just want to go to bed. It's actually, the temperature's not too bad. It's, I'm not going to say comfortable in here, but it's tolerable for sure. Tom is finishing up dinner. I think we're going to button up some of our food and take it out. Go to the bathroom one last time and hit the sack. Tomorrow, God willing, Good weather, no problems. It's gonna be a 46er. Good night. Good morning, it's about 6 a.m. Slept relatively well, nice and warm. Tent was cozy. And uh, now our first order of business is to get some water and we had our tent set up from last night. Uh, we didn't see much of it in the dark. We did a pretty good job. See, we cut out all the way around, stomping our feet. Ice axes for uh, the vestibules, and we use that uh, really cool method of filling up a plastic uh, bag and burying it under the snow for the four edges. Worked out really good. It was really, really windy last night. Um, we didn't feel much of it in the tent. Uh, I think we were protected from all the trees. And today it's just crystal clear, very still, a little bit of clouds, but I think it's gonna be a, a nice day. So I'm gonna go head out to find some water. So this is our watering hole for the week. There's a few open spots, but it's a little sketchy being on this island of ice. Love my knock outdoors bladder. It has this innovative filling flap um, you open it from the top and then just scoop it in three little swipes and just like that we got a full bladder oh winter camping tons of boiling of water pretty much you spend a lot of time uh, boiling water luckily we were able to find the Gill Brook actually uh, running in a one place so we don't have to do snow the whole time which takes forever final preps today's agenda is uh, Blake and Colvin and then we're gonna head over dial and finish on nipple top if all goes well that'll be my 46er looking forward to today's hike and if we hustle we're gonna go over to Indian Head Ready to go, brother? We're on. Game on. About 12 miles, four peaks. Damn. Let's do it. Let's get it started. Dude. 200 meters. Oh, gosh. At dusk. Uncontrolled. Oh, that's Trekking poles. We were not tethered. No ice axe, of course. And, uh,. We take a while, we reunite, but fortunately all limbs were intact. Mm -hmm. No trees, cliffs, rocks or anything. That was good. But we meant to do a hike, not an overnight. Oh. So we had to snow cave mm -hmm. it. 
which was kind of interesting. And then the next day we uh, were too scared to go in that section, so we kept trying to redirect. Clift out, clift out, clift out. And uh, because we told people where we were, wives, girlfriends, everybody mm -hmm. got nervous. They called search and rescue. They found the note on our car. Helicopter comes out first pass. Didn't see us. Flare. Oh my gosh. It was like 10 years uh, out of warranty, out of date, whatever. That didn't work. Helicopter goes away. We decide, okay, let's build a fire. Hopefully it comes back. Built the fire, tons of smoke. They see us, lower us down, uh -huh. take us out. Life is good. Is that your first helicopter ride? First and only. <laughs> first, first and only. I hope. The trail is really nice and firm. Several people came past our tent and it's solid footing. Um, we're making pretty good time, gaining a bunch of elevation. Put the buff on to chimney some of the radiating heat out of the top of my head. Working up a little bit of sweat. Feels good. Top of Colvin, summit number one today, number 43 for me. We got three more to go to 46. We got Sable Lake below us, the Great Range going out that way, and just a perfect day. Flash, I'm gonna do this. Cheers, guys. El Drinko, yeah. Pass around, everybody can have a little hooch. Okay, after tequila time, uh, got us some shots on top of Colvin. Now we're heading to Blake. That's where we're going, Blake. First, we got to go down into this valley and right back up. Whoa, that's a little steep. So we've come the half mile down from Colvin. We're at the base of Blake. Now we got a half mile up Blake. And then come right back. Number two for the day, this is Blake little bit of a view not much uh, two more to go we're gonna have to go down Blake back up Colvin and we're gonna head over to dial and nipple top clouded over just a little bit views aren't quite as good but it was pretty steep pretty cool climb for not being a true 4000er So we are back on the summit of Colvin, coming from Blake, back from that uh, anticlimactic slog, going down the valley and back up to Colvin. Now our next place is Nipple Top with that slide and dials over here someplace in the clouds. We're back at Elk Pass, sign says Nipple Top two miles. We're gonna head that way, go past nipple top, hit dial, come back and finish on nipple top. So excited, <laughs> so excited. Third set of hikers that we've passed asking, are we going to nipple top? And we said, yep, it's a bit steep. 
So we're looking forward to the climb up Nipple Top. Televators engaged. These televators are awesome on hills. When you're up a incline, it makes it feel like you're just kind of going up steps. Super good. Saves a lot on your calves. Makes it a lot easier. Nipple top, you'll have to wait. I want that to be my final summit. 0.2 miles up that way is nipple top. But we need to go get dial first. So we're gonna follow the ridge, head to dial, come right back to here, and then finish on nipple top. It's an awesome finish to an epic two days. And it will be my 46er, so it'll be extra special. Unfortunately, the blue skies we've had all day have gone away. Nothing but clouds and wind. Summit of Dial, a pretty cool ridge walk and a little bit of a climb to here. The wind is ripping and uh, we got some views, some great views of the Great Range. And uh, we're gonna hightail it over to Nipple Top. This is number 45 for me. And we're gonna finish on Nipple Top for 46. We went to Dial, got a sunset at Dial. We're at the point two trail junction up to Nipple Top. We got kind of a late start. We had a big day, long day yesterday. Planned to be kind of here at sunset. We're uh, here a little bit later. We had a big day today with summiting Blake, Colvin, Dial, and now we're gonna go up to Nipple Top. That's what happens when you live six hours away. You try to jam as much as you can in one trip. And uh, me and Tom are pretty accustomed to uh, hiking out in the dark. So instead of a sunset summit for my 46er, it's going to be uh, twilight. twilight under the moon. There's some stars out, it's pretty windy. So we probably wouldn't have spent much time on the summit anyways. So let's go get to 46. Woo! Ta-da! 46, unbelievable. Incredible. So Tom brought some champagne. Woohoo! Shake that mother and let her rip. 46er. Woo! Pop it! Woohoo! Woo! 46. Cheers, we did it. All right, I've been thinking about what 46 means to me. Okay, what does it mean? And uh, six years ago, didn't even know what a 46er was or ever climbed a mountain. And then Tom introduced me to Phelps. That was a good one. That experience, I, I gotta say, changed my life between fitness and adventure and time and money. We made some you know, major changes in our life to be able to adventure more like this. Yeah. Me and Tom, our adventures have only escalated. I think our friendship has only escalated over the years. Absolutely. And Tom, I, I owe this completely to you. Thank you for being there through all of the summits. 
I couldn't many, couldn't ask for anything better. Many more. You're like a brother, man. You're like a brother. All right. Night glissading. Boom. All right, back at the tent, getting our dry clothes on. Tom's in his undies. Don't worry, Tom. I'll blur that out. I'm looking forward to Mountain House Beef Stroganoff, one of my favorite camp meals and favorite general meals. It's a good way to celebrate becoming a 46er. Of course, we've got a little more whiskey to celebrate with. Unfortunately, guess what? We didn't get to Indian Head again today. <laughs> Another good morning. We are slowly waking up, going to get our morning prep going. We're gonna pack up camp and uh, hit Indian Head on the way out. Feels good to be a 46er. It also feels good to be packing up and going home. So the part of the tent I, we weren't able to show in the dark and how we anchored in the snow is we just buried plastic bags in the snow and connected them to the tent and it anchored them down quite well. We broke down camp doing our last preps for our heavy packs. All right, camp is packed up. We are packed up and Heading to Indian Head. Tom's built it up quite a bit. I've seen it in pictures. I'm very excited to see it. And we've got a spectacular day for it. Quick walk from camp. We are at the junction for Indian Head. Gonna drop our packs and head on out to get, do some sightseeing. like Indian Head's been a teaser this whole time. We've been trying to get here and uh, our plans have kind of changed the whole time. But now we're very close to Indian Head. Oh my gosh. This is incredible. This was worth the wait, Tom. Holy smokes. We're getting better. We're not there yet. This is uh, unbelievable. Even more spectacular than Avalanche Lake, I think. Wow. Oh my gosh. didn't disappoint. The anticipation leading up to this was monumental, but I think this is one of the prettiest places I've ever been. We're back at the parking lot. This was a very special, memorable trip. We had seven winter summits. Four of them I needed to get my 46er, and I'm a 46er. It kept getting delayed and postponed. It was great to be at Indian Head on such a clear day. Topped off a really wonderful trip. Always love coming to the Adirondacks. And we're going to celebrate with a ubu before we hit the road and get back home. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. If you want to see other outdoor adventures, other how-tos, you can subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside. Mm -hmm.